First, we are going to take a look on how we are going to fit in our two loops in this gigantic chassis. Our first reservoir and pump will be here to cool our CPU. And our coolant will travel clockwise. It will depart from the reservoir towards the pump, then pushed onto the CPU to cool it, transit through the 480mm radiator to disperse all the gathered heat, and then back to the reservoir. Our second loop is very similar. Counterclockwise, our coolant will travel from the reservoir to the second pump, then to our GPU to disperse its heat in our 360mm radiator. Finally, it will travel back to the second reservoir. On the right side panel, this is where our 480mm radiator will sit, and to keep it cool, we will mount on it no less than four high-pressure 120mm fans. On the left side panel, our GPU will be cooled by our 360mm radiator. And to cool it, we will mount on it three high-pressure 120mm fans. Alright, so now that we have a plan, we are going to dismantle the full chassis. And let's start with the glass panels. As you can see, it's quite easy. Simply remove the knobs and by gently tapping at the very base of the tempered glass, tilt it. And beware, it can be heavy, so make sure that you are ready to carry the weight so that it doesn't just smash down on the floor. To open the side panel, simply press on the release button and stow it away. Since we're at it, I am going to remove the lower right side panel. Alright, so let's take a closer look to what our right side panel was hiding. So here we have our four hard disk trays and below them the fan brackets which will cool our 480mm radiator. Alright, from now on simply uh, follow the instructions shown on your screen. And the reason why I'm going in such details is because the 900 tower is a difficult one to handle. Uh, it is a little bit impressive at first and it took me some time to come up with the steps which would make sense to our configuration. the top of our case there is no science to it you simply have to put it out as hard as you can and next we are going to remove a few interesting components first the lower motherboard bracket then the motherboard base itself and the different base element of our chassis there is really not much to it so simply follow the steps you have on your screens an advice here though make sure not to lose any of the thumb screws that we're removing make sure to put them in a cup or something because it tend to roll around your working area um, so yeah i know it seems like a trivial detail or advice but it has its importance Alright, well done! Now we are going to remove the pump bays which are only compatible with Thermotex products and since we are going to use EKWB pumps, uh, it makes no sense to keep them here. Alright, remember this part? Since we are going with a 480mm radiator, uh, there is really no room for extra hard disk trays, so we are going to remove them too. Now we are going to put in place the second half of the fan brackets which were provided by Thermaltake precisely in the case we would go for a 480mm radiator.
Now is the time to remove the PSU bracket. There's really not much to it. Just remove the two thumb screws and slide it out. Okay, so let's take a look at what's left. It's really just a skeleton of what we used to have. And I'd like to take a closer look to the top of our chassis. First, on the obvious, two 140mm massive exhausting fans. In green, the panel release mechanism we used earlier. And finally, in red, our IO shield emplacement and our peripheral brackets. Okay, so now let's take a closer look to our front panel. On the obvious part, we have four USB 3.0 plugs, our audio jacks, our power button, our reset button, and finally, our power and hard disk LEDs. Nothing groundbreaking here. In one of the hard disk trays, we will find the different screws and cables which are usually provided with any new casing. In there, we will find some zip ties. But because this case is so big, we also have two USB cable extensions. Finally, and as usual, you will find as well in there a bunch of different screws, spare springs and screw razors. Nothing really groundbreaking so far, but get ready for the next video because we are going to start cutting into this huge metallic mess.